mind maps. A mind map is a diagram used to represent words, ideas, tasks, or other items linked to and arranged radially around a central keyword or idea. It is used to generate, visualize, structure, and classify ideas, and as an aid in study, organization, problem solving, and decision making. It is an image-centered diagram that represents semantic or other connections between portions of information. By presenting these connections in a radial, non-linear, graphical manner, it encourages a brainstorming approach to any given organizational task. The elements are arranged intuitively according to the importance of the concepts, and they are organized into groupings, branches, or areas. The graphic formulation of the information may aid recall of existing memories. Mind maps have many applications in personal, family, educational, and business situations, including note-taking, brainstorming, summarizing, revising, and general clarifying of thoughts. For example, one could listen to a lecture and take down notes using mind maps for the most important points or keywords. One can also use mind maps as a mnemonic technique or to sort out a complicated idea. Mind maps are also promoted as a way to collaborate. Software and technique research have concluded that managers and students find the technique of mind mapping to be useful, being better able to retain information and ideas than by using traditional linear note-taking methods. Mind maps can be drawn by hand, either as rough notes, for example, during a lecture or meeting, or can be more sophisticated in quality. There are also a number of software packages available for producing mind maps. Mind map guidelines. Tony Buzon suggests using the following guidelines for mind mapping. Number one, start in the center with an image of the topic using at least three colors. Number two, use images, symbols, and codes throughout your mind map. Number three, Select keywords and print using upper or lowercase letters. Number four, each word slash image must be alone and sitting on its own line. Number five, the lines must be connected starting from the central image. The central lines are thicker, organic, and flowing, becoming thinner as they radiate out from the center. Number six, Make the lines the same length as the word slash image. Number seven, use colors, your own code throughout the mind map. Number eight, develop your own personal style of mind mapping. Number nine, use emphasis and show associations in your mind map. Number 10, keep the mind map clear by using radial hierarchy, numerical order, or outlines to organize your branches. Okay, Effortless English members, welcome to the Mind Maps Vocabulary Discussion. Let's get started right away. Diagram is our first word. A diagram is a drawing or a graph of information or for information. So it's not just any drawing. A drawing of a person is not a diagram. A diagram shows information. Okay, we well, see the phrase linked to, linked to. It means connected to. If uh, items are linked to each other, they are connected to each other. Next, we see the word radially, that in a mind map, information is arranged radially. Radially means in a circle, in a circular way, like a circle, around. So that's radially arranged in a circular way, radially. The, same, the next sentence, we see the word generate, to generate. Uh, mind maps generate new ideas. That means to make or to create, to generate. The word structure means, uh, used as a verb, to structure something, means to organize it. So mind maps can be used to structure ideas, to organize ideas. And classify, used as a verb to classify ideas, also has a similar meaning as organize, um, structure, organize, classify. These are all very similar. 
classify actually means to put things in groups, put ideas or things into groups that are similar. So all, uh, for example, we classify a dog as a mammal. It's in the mammal group with other mammals, other creatures that have hair. Okay, so we see the word semantic in the next paragraph. A mind map represents semantic information. Semantic means meaning, related to words and meaning, about meaning, about words and meaning. So mind maps, uh, they use a lot of words in mind maps, and mind maps organize ideas. They, they're, they organize meaning. That's what mind maps do. Okay. We see the word portions in this uh, same sentence. Uh, mind maps organize portions of information. A portion is a piece. So a portion of information is a piece of information or a part of information. All right. We see the word nonlinear. Mind maps are nonlinear. Nonlinear means not in a straight line. So linear means straight line, in a straight line. It comes from the word line, linear. Nonlinear, not in a straight line. That same thing we see, nonlinear graphical manner. Mind maps are also graphical. Graphical is quite similar to diagram, except graphical is an adjective. Graphical means uh, with images, okay, with pictures. All right. We see the word brainstorming in the same sentence. Mind maps encourage brainstorming. In fact, mind maps are a good way to brainstorm. Uh, brainstorming, or to brainstorm, means to think of a lot of ideas very quickly, trying to be creative. So you just think as fast as you can and you write down your ideas, one after the other after the other. You don't stop, you don't pause to think about the ideas, you don't judge the ideas. You just write them down as fast as possible. We call that process brainstorming. You can also use it as a verb to brainstorm. All right, we see the word in the next paragraph, intuitively. Mind maps uh, organize information intuitively. Intuitively means naturally. And to be more specific, intuitively means uh, in an instinctual way, coming from instinct. It means not from conscious thought. It means you don't think about it first and plan it. It comes from the right side of your brain intuitively. It means you kind of feel what's what is correct and you, you follow your feeling. If you've watched uh, Star Wars, right? Use the force, Luke. That's basically an intuitive way of doing something. You use the force. You follow your deep feeling instead of thinking too much. So mind maps are very intuitive. They're used intuitively. Right? In the same sentence, the end, I mean the same paragraph, we see the word recall. Mind maps can aid, can help recall of memories. Recall means uh, to remembering or memory. So it helps memory. Mind maps can help memory. If you start doing a mind map, it can help you remember things that you thought you forgot. The next paragraph we say, mind maps have many applications. An application mean, is a use, so it means they have many uses, many ways to use them, many applications. That's why a software is sometimes called an application. It means uh, something that is used to do something. Application. All right, at the bottom of that paragraph we see the word mnemonic. We've had that one before in a past learning guide in a past article. A mnemonic technique. Mind maps can be a mnemonic technique. Mnemonic means uh, to help memory. Something that helps memory. Something that helps you remember something else. So a mnemonic. A mind map is a mnemonic. It's a tool. It's a technique that helps memory. It's a mnemonic. All right at the end of that paragraph we see the verb to collaborate. Mind maps uh, are also used uh, to collaborate with other people. You can do a mind map in a group. Everybody can yell out their ideas, and one person can write down the mind map uh, on a whiteboard, maybe. So it's, it, you can collaborate. To collaborate means to work together. It means two or more people working together. 
So you say, oh, I collaborated on, and we usually say on or with. You collaborate on a project, you collaborate with other people. So you say, I collaborated with my friend to make this article. It means we both work together to make this article. We collaborated, we worked together. All right, next paragraph. Mind maps can help you retain information. Retain means keep. To retain something means to keep it. You already have it and you keep it. You retain it. Sometimes, such as this case, we sometimes use retain to mean remember. So if you retain information, it means you remember the information. You keep the information in your brain. All right, we see the word rough notes in the next paragraph, the phrase rough notes. Mind maps can be uh, drawn by hand as rough notes, or they could be quite sophisticated. You can use software to do mind maps. Rough notes. Rough, of course, rough as a meaning means not smooth, but rough also means uh, not planned, not edited. For example, when you first write an article or you're writing a paper, the first time you write it, we call that a roughed draft, a rough draft. It means you have not edited it, you didn't worry about making mistakes, you haven't corrected your mistakes, you haven't used spell check yet. It's your rough draft, it's your first draft, your first time. And then you'll write it again a couple times. You'll check your mistakes. You'll correct your mistakes. So the rough draft is the first time you do something. Rough notes just means you're quickly writing. You're not worrying about mistakes or you're not worrying how it looks. So it's not planned very well. All right. In the next page, we see some guidelines, some rules. A guideline is a rule. Guideline is more loose. A rule is kind of strict, kind of tough. A rule is something you must do. A guideline is something you might want to do, or you should probably do. So it's less strong. A guideline is less strong than a rule. Uh, so then we've got a list of guidelines, some ideas how to do a mind map, some basic rules you might want to follow. One of the rules, uh, rule number five, uses the word organic. It says the lines on a mind map, the structure, the organization should be organic. Organic has, uh, it depends on the situation, organic has several meanings. But in general, organic means natural. And in fact, it really means biological, coming from life. Now there are more specific meanings in science and in chemistry. Uh, organic can have a little bit different meaning. But in general use, organic means natural or coming from natural life. Alrighty, and finally, the last one, number 10, we see, oh, let's go to number 9 first, actually. We see the word associations. It says, use associations, show associations in your mind map. In this case, associations means connections, or relations, or relationships, right? And association is, means you're connected somehow to somebody or something. All right. And finally, the last one, number 10, we see radial hierarchy. Radial hierarchy. Hierarchy is similar to structure. It means, you know, a hierarchy shows what is the most important thing and then what's next and then what's next. If you're talking about a company, you might say who's the most, the top person, the president, the CEO, and then the vice president, and then other, you know, regional presidents, and then etc. So this is the structure. A radial hierarchy means it's in a circle. The organization is in a circle. Nobody's at the top, or in this case, nothing is at the top, right? You have something in the middle, your main idea, and then you have many other ideas, lots of other information surrounding it, around it. But nothing is more important than anything else. That's radial hierarchy, circular hierarchy. Remember, radial means in a circle or like a circle. All right, that's it. I suggest... You listen to this vocabulary lesson a few times. If you're an advanced student, maybe one time's enough. If you're not a uh, really advanced student, you probably should listen um, several times so that you get a general feeling, a general idea about the vocabulary. After that, listen to the mini story lesson. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.
Hello, effortless English members. Here is the mini story lesson for the mind maps article. Let's get started. First, the vocabulary we will practice today: radially. Radially means uh, arranged in a circle, or uh, circular, or done in a circular way. Is the uh, actual. Way we use it.、Um, portions, portions means parts or pieces. Diagram, a diagram is a drawing or a sketch or a graph, something visual to plan or show some information. Diagrams, they're not just pictures. If I draw a picture of a person, that's not a diagram. A diagram is a picture. That shows information, some kind of information. Okay,、uh, we have the word intuitively, or intuitive is the adjective, right? Intuitively is the adverb. Intuitively means naturally. It means it actually means the direct meaning. You don't think with your conscious mind. It's kind of your instinct, instinctually or naturally. Okay, non-linear. Linear means line in a straight line. So non-linear means not in a straight line. To collaborate, to collaborate means to work together. So one,、uh, two or more people working together, we call that collaborating or to collaborate. Okay, to generate, to generate means to make or to create. Generate, and finally the word semantics. Semantics means meaning, actually, meaning, and we use this often. Meaning of words. It often refers to the meaning of words. Semantics. Okay, let's get started with the story. First, the story at normal speed. Quinn the Eskimo needed to build a house. But he didn't want to build a house from ice like every other、uh, every other Eskimo. He decided to make a giant circular house out of bananas. First, he arranged bananas radially in a big circle. Then he stacked portions of bananas to make walls. He didn't draw a diagram for the house. He made it intuitively. The entire house was non-linear. There were no straight lines in the house. Every wall was curved. Of course, Quinn didn't make his house alone. Quinn collaborated with fifty monkeys, very small monkeys. While they worked, the monkeys generated a lot of noise. They were always yeah, 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 making a lot of noise. They also ate a lot of the bananas. Stop eating the bananas! Yelled Quinn. You said we could eat while we worked. Yelled one of the monkeys. But I didn't say you could eat my house while you built it. You should bring your own food. Said Quinn. Well, that's a matter of semantics. You said we could eat while we worked, so we're gonna eat, and we're gonna work. Said the monkey. And so. Every time a wall was built, it would soon get eaten by other monkeys. Thus, Quinn never did finish his house. Okay, let's go back to the beginning and、uh, let's do the story again. This time,、uh, I'm going to do questions. You can try to quickly answer the questions, but you don't need to repeat yet. The the third time, you'll repeat. This time, I'm just going to ask questions to get more repetition. Just kind of think the answers. You can say them out loud quickly if you can, but don't worry if you can't. Okay, Quinn the Eskimo needed to build a house. <laughs> He decided to make a giant house, a giant circular house, out of bananas. What did he make his house from? Did he make his house out of ice? No, he didn't make his out his house out of ice. He made it out of bananas. First, he arranged bananas radially in a big circle. Did he arrange、uh, cucumbers radially? 
No, he didn't arrange cucumbers radially. Did he uh, arrange kimchi, Korean kimchi radially? No, he didn't arrange kimchi radially. What did he arrange radially? Well, he arranged bananas radially. Did he arrange the bananas in a square? No, no, he arranged them radially. He arranged them in a big circle. Did he arrange uh, bottles in a radial way? No, he did not arrange bottles radially. He arranged bananas radially in a big circle. Then he stacked portions of bananas to make walls. Did he stack portions of grapes, pieces of grapes? No, no, no. He didn't stack portions of, bana- uh, of grapes. He stacked portions of bananas. Did he stack portions of rocks? No, no, no. He didn't stack portions of rocks. He stacked portions of bananas. Did he stack whole bananas, the entire banana? No, 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 no. He stacked only pieces of bananas. He stacked portions of bananas. He cut them first. Then he would put them on top of each other. He would stack them to make walls. He stacked portions, pieces of bananas. He didn't draw a diagram for the house. He made it intuitively. Did he uh, make a plan? Did he draw a house plan first? No, no, he did not make a diagram for the house. He didn't draw the house plan first and then make it. There was no diagram at all. Uh, Did he draw any kind of plan? No, he did not. He made the house intuitively. Did he think about making the house first? No, he made the house intuitively. He just quickly, he would think of something and he would do it immediately. He thought intuitively with his instinct, with his natural gut feeling. So he made the house intuitively. There was no diagram, no plan, no drawing. The entire house was also non-linear. Were there straight lines in the house? No, no straight lines. The entire house was non-linear. Was the driveway non-linear? Well, I don't know. We didn't talk about a driveway. Was the driveway non-linear? Oh, maybe not. Maybe the driveway was curvy also. Maybe the driveway also did not have straight lines. But we do know the entire house was non-linear. No straight lines in the house. The house was non-linear. Every wall was curved. Of course, Quinn didn't make his house alone. Quinn collaborated with 50 monkeys. Did he collaborate with 10 monkeys? No, no, no. He collaborated with 50 monkeys. Did he collaborate with 50 dogs? No, he didn't collaborate with 50 dogs. Did he collaborate with 50 cats? No, no, no. He worked together with 50 monkeys. He collaborated with 50 monkeys. Was he the big boss or was he working together with them? Well, he was kind of the boss, but he also worked together with them. He collaborated with them. He worked together with them. The 50 monkeys. While they worked, the monkeys generated a lot of noise. Did they make a lot of noise? (laughs) Yes, they did. Of course they did. They generated a lot of noise. Did they generate a lot of heat? No, no, no. They didn't make a lot of heat. They made a lot of noise. They generated a lot of noise. Did they generate a lot of money? No, definitely not. They did not make money while they were building. They generated a lot of noise. They made a lot of noise while they made the house. There was another problem. They ate a lot of the bananas. He's making the house out of bananas, but they're eating the bananas. So Quinn got angry. He yelled, stop eating the bananas. But one of the monkeys yelled back. You said we could eat while we worked, yelled one of the monkeys. Quinn yelled back again, but I didn't say you could eat my house while you built it. You should bring your own food. But the monkey was not convinced. The monkey said, well, that's a matter of semantics. You said we could eat while we worked, so we're going to eat while we work. So did the monkey agree? Did they agree on the meaning of what Quinn said? Quinn said, 
You can eat while you work. Did they agree what that sentence meant? No, they did not agree on it. Quinn thought that meant bring your own food. But the monkeys thought that meant we can eat the house while we build it. We can eat the bananas that are here. It was a matter of semantics. It was a matter of meaning. Did they agree on the semantics? No, they did not agree on the meaning at all. The semantics of uh, Quinn's sentence was not the same for Quinn as it was for the monkeys. They had a different idea of the semantics, a different idea of the meaning of the words. They did not agree. And so the monkeys kept eating. Every time a wall was built, it would soon get eaten. Thus, Quinn never did finish his house. All right, <laughs> good. Let's do it one more time with this silly story and practice some of the vocabulary. I'll re start reading some of the uh, sentences. When I come to a sentence with a new vocabulary word, I will repeat it a couple times, and you repeat after me. Say the whole sentence. I'll pause and then copy my pronunciation. Let's go. Quinn the Eskimo needed to build a house. He decided to make a giant circular house out of bananas. First, he arranged the bananas radially. First, he arranged the bananas radially. Okay, good. First, he arranged the bananas radially. Good, he put them in a big circle. Then, he stacked portions of bananas to make walls. 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 Very good. He didn't draw, draw a diagram. He didn't draw a diagram. Good. He made it intuitively. He made it intuitively. The house was nonlinear. The house was nonlinear. Quinn collaborated with fifty monkeys. Quinn collaborated with fifty monkeys. They generated a lot of noise. They generated a lot of noise. The monkey did not agree with what Quinn said. So the monkey said, that's a matter of semantics. That's a matter of semantics. Good. That's a matter of semantics. Very nice. Listen again one more time or three more times or a hundred more times, whatever. And then pause, stop, and try to tell all of the story yourself from the beginning to the end. You don't need to remember every word or every sentence. Remember the general ideas. Try to use the vocabulary. Okay, good job. See you next time. Bye-bye. So let's go. Mind maps. Actually, um, Pin, one of our members, he has uh, been suggesting topics and writing forums, and he requested this topic. He uh, sent me some links to mind map articles. I found one. Uh, one of the links he sent was Wikipedia, uh, and it's an interesting topic. In fact, I already knew about mind maps. Um, I use mind maps myself. Uh, mind maps are great. If you, if you still don't quite understand what they look like, I suggest uh, going to the... Uh, use. Use the text guide, the learning guide, and go to the bottom, and you'll see the Learn More section, and there's a link, and it says Mind Map Example. Um, if you go to that, you'll get a picture of what a mind map can look like, um, or the general you know, appearance of it. But anyway, um, mind maps are very useful. I use them for writing. Uh, I don't know. Some of you may know. my One of my three... <laughs> 
<laughs> one of my three degrees, my undergraduate degree was in journalism. Uh, so I'm a writer, and I still write freelance. I haven't written, um, haven't written much actually the last year since I came to San Francisco. But before San Francisco, I was living in Thailand, and I would write uh, mostly travel articles and uh, send them to different magazines. Anyway, when I needed to make an article, I needed ideas for an article, I often would use a mind map. So I would put my central idea in the middle of the paper. Uh, let's say I'm in Thailand. I want to write about uh, Thai street food. That was one of my articles. So I, I'd write Thai street food. I'd put it in the middle of a piece of paper. I'd write it in the center. And then I'd just start brainstorming, right? I'd just start thinking of random ideas. The first idea that, or the first word or phrase that came into my head, I would write it around. So I'd say Thai street food. I would think uh, Tom Yum. Tom Yum is a kind of Thai food. I would write Tom Yum on the paper and draw a line connecting those two things, street food and Tom Yum. And then next to Tom Yum, I would write, um, you know, uh, 50 baht. 50 baht is about, um, I'm sorry, or 10 baht. 10 baht is about 50 cents, so it's very cheap. And then I would write spicy. And then I would write, um, you know, next to my apartment because I'm thinking of a place next to my apartment where I would usually eat. And I would just keep doing that, going, going crazy. We just, that every, whatever popped into my head, I wrote it down. And then the next thing that popped into my head, I wrote it down. And I would connect these with lines. If I, if I got stuck, if ideas stopped coming, then I would just look at the paper. I'd pick one of the words on the paper, and I'd concentrate on it, and I would see what associations, what uh, connections, what thoughts I would have connected to that word. So let's say I'm, I'm doing this and then I stop. I can't think of anything, you know, and I'm like, oh, well, I'd look at the phrase next to my apartment. I imagine the place next to my apartment and suddenly I think noise because it was very noisy and I write down noise. Then I think pollution. Oh, I write down pollution. Then I think, um, you know, plastic seats and I write down plastic seats and then I keep going again. Well, after doing this for about five or ten minutes, I have a whole page full of words and phrases. Some are very directly related to my topic, Thai street food. Some are not. Some are totally unrelated. They seem unrelated. Um, but the, the great thing about this is I would get a lot of interesting details for my article. And I would get some interesting ideas that... If I used a normal technique, a normal organization, like an outline, point one, then A, B, C, point two, A, B, C, that's kind of a very linear, structured, uh, in my opinion, a little bit boring way to organize a paper. It's okay for school papers, I guess, but for something a little more creative, it's not so good. So I would use a mind map instead, and uh, my writing, it would be the first step of my writing. The second thing I would do, I'd look at my mind map, and I would look for interesting ideas, and I would start circling them. For example, pollution was one of the ideas I used, because sitting on the street in Bangkok, eating, well, there's a lot of pollution. So I wanted to write about that. I wanted to give that feeling. What is it like to be sitting in a street in Bangkok eating, or well, next to a street in Bangkok eating food? I wanted to capture some of the feeling, and that includes the pollution, it includes the noise, it includes how the, the, the heat, all those details. And making the mind map first helped me remember some of those details. So I would circle the interesting details, I would circle the interesting ideas. Then I would organize those ideas, I would pick the best ones, and I would put them in groups. Maybe I would use a color. So everything related to the... Uh, uh, the details, like how it, how it looked or felt or sounded. Uh, maybe I might put that in red, circle those with red. And then when I'm talking about the actual food, what food was available, maybe I would circle all the food items in green that I thought about. And maybe when I'm thinking about cost, how much does it cost, and saving money and how cheap it is, maybe I'd put that in blue. So then after I'm finished, I have maybe three or four different colors on the page. And those are my general topics. That's the general uh, topics that I'm going to write about in my article. In fact, I would usually write one or two paragraphs for each color, for each group. 
So this helped me organize my paper. It helped my uh, article. It helped me think of interesting ideas. It helped me think of interesting details that I wanted to talk about. It was a really great technique for creative writing uh, or for any kind of writing, in fact. I also use uh, mind maps uh, when I just need to think of ideas. I'm, maybe I'm stuck. Uh, I'm thinking about ideas for effortless English, for example, and I don't know what to do next. So I just will make a mind map. In the center of the page, I will put effortless English. I write that phrase. Then I just start going. And the first thing I think about, I write down. Uh, maybe I'll think of, uh, you know, internet. And then I'll write internet. And then what's the next thing I think about? Podcast. And I write podcast. And I just keep going. And the point with a mind map is to do it quickly. Do not edit your thoughts. Do not stop and think. You want to keep the ideas coming quickly. You want to write fast. Later... Later, you can go back, circle the most interesting ideas, or later you can organize them more. So anyway, that's how I use mind maps. So I use mind maps really to generate ideas, I'd say. That's probably uh, the way I use them most. Now, some people uh, in the article talks about you can use mind maps to take notes. You're in a class, uh, the professor, the teacher's lecturing, giving a talk and uh, you want to write down the main idea. So in the center, you might write down the, the topic. Let's say um, English, uh, learning English. And then he talks about four main points, speaking, reading, writing, you know, etc. Uh, and then you write each of those in a, around uh, the center of learning English, which is the kind of the center idea. And then you write more details coming off of those. So you can use it to take notes. I've never done that myself, but uh, it sounds interesting. I think it's a good idea. Um, you could use that for the mini story. By the way, for any of our uh, lessons, you can take notes if you're not in a car um, driving while you're listening to these lessons. Uh, take some notes. And you can do it with a mind map. I think that would be a good way to do it. For example, you're listening to the mini story lesson. Well, as you listen, you might just write down a, a key word from each sentence and you just write them and you just connect them to each other. And that might help you remember the whole story. You don't have time. I'm going too fast. You can't write the whole story. But you could write down keywords just to remember the main ideas of the story. And that would help you at the end when I, at the end of the story, I tell you, please stop this. Now try to tell the story yourself. Well, if you've got some notes, if you've got a little mind map to remind you of the vocabulary of the main ideas, that probably would help. I don't know. Try it. Let me know. Write it in the forums. Go to the forums. Try it and tell us, did, did it help or did it not? <laughs> All right. I guess that's it for my commentary. Uh, in general, I think mind maps are a great tool. Uh, I especially think they're a good creativity tool. And uh, I think they could also be good for note taking, as we just mentioned. So give it a try. Try using mind maps when you when you write, when you're writing English, um, instead of you know whoa, doing this painful thing and thinking, thinking, thinking forever and making a boring normal outline. Try to make a mind map first instead. It might help you start writing more quickly and more easily. And when you take notes, if you take notes when you listen to these lessons, use a mind map. Alrighty, and finally, use a mind map and write something in the forums. Please use the forums! Alright, see you next time. Bye-bye.